Hello everyone, Power Query Challenge again. Today our challenge is to transform this worksheet. What I need from this worksheet is only a range of data from here. I don't need all the other rows except the employee name and the employee ID. I want the employee name next to it, also the employee ID next to it. And the final outcome should have no empty columns in the table. Because here in the original worksheet, we can see that we have many merged cells and we have many, many empty columns across the table. This is the outcome that we want. A simple table with no empty columns and also with the employee name and employee ID as part of the table to identify this set of data is belongs to Anna. And the real challenge we have is we are dealing with a lot of different worksheets. Each worksheet represents one employee. I need to transform each worksheet and then combine them together. And this is our challenge of today. Let's see how we can achieve it with Power Query. To start with, I'm using a blank workbook because I want to keep the original file untouched. I don't want to edit anything on the original file. And the good thing about Power Query is it can access to a Excel workbook without it, without opening it and with all the content inside the workbook. Let's see how to do it. Go to the data tab, get data from file from a workbook. Then select which workbook we want to look at, we want to access to, which is the sample file I put on desktop here. So import. Now this navigator allow me to select a particular worksheet. Now we can have a preview of the worksheet here and there are something called the pin titles uh, which is uh, also created automatically in the file itself but I don't want them and I don't want to hard cook any of the worksheet because in the real life the workbook contains more than 100 worksheet in my example. I'm just making it simple to show you 10 worksheet but the uh, logic and the workflow is the same. So what I'm going to do is I right click on this one and then select transform data. Now I have the Power Query Editor opened. This is where I do all the transformation. Here we can see that this is the attributes of the workbook that we access to. We can see we have the sheet and the define name. And what we want is actually just the worksheet. So here I can filter just to show the worksheet. And in each worksheet, we have a table. The table is basically the content within the worksheet. Let's have a look what it is. So we can see that each worksheet is very consistent. This is the good thing about the workbook because that was a result generated from a system. That means it gives a very consistent layout and data structure. So we can see that we have the same, we have the employee name in the same position, which is this row and this column across each table on each worksheet. So it makes the transformation much easier. I'm going to show you how we are going to get it. Okay, but what we need to do in the following 10 minutes is get one example, which is one of the table here, do the transformation we need, turn it into a function, and then apply the function to all the tables listed here. So to start with, I will duplicate this query, like it, duplicate. Okay, 
just let it be. This is the uh, query named sample file number two. So what I want is to get a sample table here. On the right hand side, I don't want these steps. So I delete it. So this is my starting point. Basically, this is the table to start with. So I'm going to rename it. Starting point. The first thing I want is to get the employee name, which is on the seven row of column five. The next one I want is the employee ID, which is also on the row seven, but on the column 13. So how can I do it? I can simply do it from the user interface here. Select the cell, right click, and then kill them. So look at the formula bar here, which is called starting point. Because Power Query is a zero-based program, so number six means the seventh row and the column five. So we have the intersect of the uh, column five and the seven row, which is the employee named Anna for this case. So let I let me rename it to employee name. I'm going to add one new step to get the employee ID, but I have no idea where it is. So I go back to my starting point. I locate it again. Of course, I can do the drill down again, but I don't need to do it because what I am going to do is to go to this employee name because I see that what is the difference is just the column number. So I'm going to copy this formula, go back to this custom one and then change it. to the same formula, but revising to 13 column, column 13. There we go, I have the employee ID here. Let me rename this to employee ID. Now, I'm going to add one new step, but instead of working on the employee ID, because when I add a new step, it always refer to the previous step. But I don't want it to refer to the previous step. I want it to refer to the starting point. So here in the formula bar, I just change it to starting point. There we go. Now we are ready to do all the transformation we need. First thing is to remove all the rows on the top that I don't need. So I go to this Remove rows, remove top rows. How many rows I don't want, which is 23. So I input 23 here. I want the row starting from 24. Done. The next one is to select the column I need. But before that, I want to promote the row number one into a headers. So I have some meaningful headers names. So go to the home tab, click on this one. Use first word as headers. There we go. Now we are ready to choose the columns that we want to keep. Just period. This is the division. Total salary, total days, total commissions, and also total days. There are many empty rows that we don't want. So let's get rid of it, but remove empty. Now I'm ready to add the employee name and the employee ID here to the end of the table. So I'm going to add a column, a custom column, and name it as employee name. The content will be the employee name. What is it? Which is exactly the step we created before. Okay, there we go. We have Anna here. 
repeat the same steps for employee ID. Equal to employee ID. Again, this is the step we have created, which is basically the employee ID on the on the worksheet. Okay. Oh, here, the period why it is a date. Let me go back here. After the promoter header steps, a change type is automatically created for me. But I don't want it to change the period into a date. So I'm going to delete this. There we go. Okay, I can go back here. Now I can define the data type by myself. So the first two should be a test. And all this should be decimal. And all these two will be also a test. We are done. The next step is to convert all the transformation steps into a function. So how are we going to do it? We are going to do it in the advanced editor. Go to the field here, advanced editor. Well, don't be panicked for all the M code created here. We just need to know what modification we are going to make. Actually, at this, that is simple. In order to convert all the transformation steps into a function, we add something on the top of the functions. So I will put starting point here as table, because do you remember we have a step of starting point, which is actually the input of the table for the transformation. And remember, at the end, we need to input the go to operator, which is a equal sign followed by the larger than. Actually, we don't want the first three lines. Instead of remove them totally from the uh, advanced editor, I just put two forward slash here. That means this line is a comment. So power query do not execute the line. Why I'm going to keep it? Because in case I need to modify the steps, I can simply come back and turn it into a comment and then remove this line to make it a normal transformation. So that is the idea. And this is a very good trick uh, to keep the line that I want and come back later. So now I don't want it. So let's do it like this. There we go. Let's click OK. Done. We have set the function here. We can rename it as the function of transform shade. Now we can go back to the original sample file query here. What we want is to add a custom column invoking the Function. So I go to add columns, invoke custom functions. So just leave it there because I am not going to use the column name there. So it doesn't matter. So the function query is the function that we created. And because I have selected the column data, so it detects I want to transform the table under the data column. Okay. Now we have a column called transformed shape, which is fine. And take a look. We have all the table transformed in the format that we want. The final step is simply to combine all the table together. So what I'm going to do is to right click on this column, drill down. So it gives me a list of tables. And then I'm going to add one step here. The function is table combined, which is quite intuitive. And enter. There we go. It is done. So let's close and note 
close and load to select where I want to load it to just know it to shift number one a one oh okay dun 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 we have all the data consolidate and let's check it so we should have 10 different people yes wait why we will have a column called total days underscores five here oh yes because in our data we have two columns of the same name total days and in excel table or in power query we cannot have two columns with the same names when it happens excel will add a number at the end of it to differentiate the column names i don't want this column names number five it makes no sense to me so i'm going to edit it in the power query editor double click there to open the power query editor this is our resulting our query and this is our transformation query in a function because this is in a function i cannot edit any transformation steps here i want a normal query so how can i do it i go to the view advanced editor do you remember the reason i talked about before why i want to keep the line instead of removing it is i expect i may come back later to modify the steps that's why i prefer to keep them now what i need to do is to on the top line i put the forward slash the two forward slash to make it a comment so the power query will not execute this night but i removed the original uh, forward slash i put on the first line on, on the first three lines here now then there we go we have the long mode query we can further edit or add some steps on it let's double click here change the name to total days commissions done go back to the advanced editor reverse the steps i want to make it a function so i don't want this line and this line and this line then i have the function back go back to the sample file see that the column headers has revised home close and load and now let refresh the query see there we go 